Hi, my name is Claudine Lewis. I'm a respiratory therapy student. There's a huge glare right there. Um, I'm here to go over some vent initiation with y'all. Um, so we're going to say we have a 72-year-old guy that his wife found him in the yard. He was riding his ride mower and she has no idea what happened. We don't know anything about his history because she's not gotten to the emergency room yet. So we're going to assume he's healthy because we really don't know. Um, he should weigh around 76 kilograms. So... I've already turned it on just because I can't handle it. There we go. 76. All right. So um, we don't know anything about them. So we're going to go with a volume mode. Set settings. Control. Um, we're going to go 100%. Spin that little sucker. Um, the volume should be. Um, ouch. Around 500 ish. Eh, it'll set at 520. Let's keep that. Uh, 1.4. I think it does some of the math by itself. Let's go one. I really don't know. Frequency. 12 is a good number. It's an easy number. Keep a five. I really don't know. It'll work. Additional settings. T -t 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 Trigger. Is off because we're in controlled. Keep. All right. Alarm. Peak airway 40. Apnea. I gotta change that to 20 because that's critical on here. Poop 15. Okay. High tidal volume. Frequency 30. Okay, perfect. Poop. And we're gonna start. All right. Pressure control. Um. That's not the one I wanted either. <laughs> Let me fix that. Control. Someone off. Someone off. Shh. All right. So um, after we've got him initialized on our appropriate settings and alarms, we're going to document all of that fun stuff. Um, a lot of the therapists here, like if it's, um, you have a, inspiratory pressure and an expiratory pressure it'll be like 10 over 5. Um, it took me forever to figure out what that meant. Um, so like um, say your PEEP is 5 and your pressure support is 5, it's 5 and 5. Um, so frequency is 12. You're going to document all this stuff. Um, either I like to start at the, the patient because that tells me kind of what's going on with the vent. Um, you know, how are their breast sounds? Do they need suctioning? Do they need um, a bronchodilator? Um, are they biting on the ET tube? Do they need some more sedation? Um, are they developing any sores? Do they need um, mouth suctioning or mouth care in addition to um, suctioning in the um, ET tube? Um, and just kind of, you know, watch them, see how they're doing. Are they coughing a lot? Um, are they awake when they shouldn't be? Are they asleep when we want them to start waking up? Um, are they tolerating things okay? Um, yeah, that works. So, um, let's see, we started off at 100. Yes, perfect. All right, so we're going to document all of this stuff. Um, after it gets to the ER and we get intubated, um, check an ABG, check... Um, to find out why he's unconscious, you know, which is not really our ball of wax, but um, it can be. You know, is he a diabetic? Did his blood sugar drop? Did he have a heart attack? Did he have a stroke? All that kind of stuff that we don't know um, that, you know, eventually will get found out. Was it a massive infection? Pulmonary embolus? Who knows? Um, it could be so many things. Um, heat stroke? Because he was mowing the yard. Um, anyway, uh, of course it does. Every time it does that, I lose my train of thought. I'm just going to tell you now. So uh, we're documenting um, what kind of mode we're on, what our settings are, what they're actually doing um, versus our settings, our alarm settings, highs and lows um, for respiratory rate, low rate. For some reason, I cannot set a low rate on this. I don't, I don't really know why, but it will not allow me to do it. Um, I can set a high rate, but that's it. Um, our resistance, our compliance, our CO2, all of that good stuff. Our cuff, um, where it's at at the lip, what size it is. Um, I've got one of them me. This is 7.5. Eh, it would be a little on the big side for me, but it might work. 
if you needed it to. I really hate to think about that going down my throat. Um, and then, you know, your cuff, um, you're going to check that with your manometer. Um, dang it. This one has a leak. This is a training ET tube. So, um, there we go. I got down to eh, 24. Um, one of the uh, therapists really likes to use a syringe so she knows how much air she's adding, whether it's half a cc or a whole cc. Um, this is a little unreliable and hard to do. Um, so my patient's ventilating nicely over here. Um, assess the patient. Write down all the vent stuff. Um, do this every four hours or anytime you change something. Like if you change a setting, if you change a pressure, if you change a tidal volume, um, if you change modes, anything like that, um, document it and, and draw an ABG shortly after you make the changes to see if you're, if you're making things better or worse. Or if it even has anything to do with respiratory. If it's a metabolic issue, we don't really want to try to change a bunch of settings to fix that. It's not going to. All we can do is continue support until the metabolic issue is rectified. Um, I think that covers initiation and patient assessment for an unknown older fellow that fell off the lawnmower. Thank you.